The Goat House is back with the secret weapon from every single NFL team this season. Basically a player that's going to make much more noise than everybody realizes. A video I really enjoy doing every single year. Starting with the veteran, Jonu Smith. Now on the Miami Dolphins. He was solid in Tennessee. Everyone's like, that's a player. Then extremely underwhelming, disappointing after that. And now people have no expectations for him, not being hyped up at all. The Dolphins sign him. Everyone's like, Mike McDaniel doesn't really, you know, the Dolphins, they don't really use tight ends in the passing game. But this is not really a normal tight end. It's a gadget weapon type of tight end. The Dolphins made sure they, they, you know, they had to have him, it felt like. So I'd watch out for him to be more involved, much more of a weapon uh, than people are expecting. How about a rookie for the New England Patriots, Javon Baker, rookie from Central Florida, formerly was on Alabama, making a little bit of noise in training camp. He's a really good separator, and he catches the ball. They recently... Uh, cut Juju Smith-Schuster, and I know they have a number of tight ends still, but it opens up a spot, uh, you know, gives chances elsewhere here for these other receivers. I'd watch out for Baker to be used a little bit more. I think eyes are on Polk, the other rookie receiver, who most likely could be better than Baker, but watch out for both those guys, including Baker, to make some noise. For the Bills, interesting one, because I think Buffalo Bills fans out there watching, they're probably like, is Terrell Bernard really uh, that much of a secret to us? Maybe not, but I think rest of the world. I, I think nobody really knows Bernard's name right now, uh, and, and he's going to start next to Matt Milano. He's going to make a pretty big impact. He's going to make much more of a name for himself than you know what how people label him right now. So definitely uh, another one to watch. Um, could be a big-time player in the near future. The Jets, Malachi Corley, uh, rookie from Western Kentucky. And people know this is a really good guy after the catch, really good gadget option. But, hey, they people may say the Jets have other receivers, veteran receivers that may be used. But I'd say Corley is going to be used much more, be much more part of the game plan than people realize. Could be Aaron Rodgers, Randall Cobb. Could be a, yeah, definitely using that gadget, different gadget ways, not just the pass game but the run game. On NFC East teams, uh, Commanders, one of my favorites on the video, was one of my favorite draft prospects this year, was my number two tight end uh, in, the, in the draft from Kansas State, Ben Sinnott, who um, you know had a pretty good showing in his first preseason game. But yeah, rookie tight end that really wasn't talked about a ton, and they have Zach Ertz, who's played under Kingsbury, so people may be thinking he might be a little quiet year one. I'd say he's better than Zach Ertz right away. I think he's going to be much more productive than people realize an absolute weapon could be a mismatch weapon really tough after the catch uh, for the Giants tough decision was thinking two running backs um, Tyrone Tracy I really like that draft pick it was a former receiver turned turned to running back I thought about putting him here but Eric Gray another guy I liked a lot uh, when he was at Tennessee but he came out of Oklahoma liked him there as well um, we haven't seen a whole lot of him yet but in this you know first preseason game he looked very very solid Got some nasty cuts and jukes. And that running back room without Saquon Barkley, a little bit more wide open. So watch out for Gray to make more of an impact than, than people realize. For the Eagles, I like Jeremiah Trott, another rookie here. A lot of rookies popping up in this video. Uh, I think it's a safe bet to be, you know, like a, a plug and play type rookie linebacker. He, he can cover uh, and he can blitz. And I think the Eagles can get a lot out of him doing that. Uh, and the linebacker position's a little open for Philadelphia, for, for Philadelphia like it has been. So uh, Trotter can get on the field a little bit more right away or during his rookie year than people are realizing, uh, and he can make some plays. Uh, Cowboys, I'm going to go another another rookie linebacker here, Maris Leofile. Thought about a couple different linebackers. I liked Overshone a lot a lot last year from Texas, but they switched defensive schemes with defensive coaches Mike Zimmer. Uh, Mike Zimmer had to have Leofile. It feels like a, a Zimmer-type guy. Uh, he's super flashy, flashy, super rangy, super long, athletic. Uh, so I think Leofile right away can make some spl uh, splashy plays for Dallas. Uh, for the Bengals, I will go with a second-year player, Miles Murphy. And he was a not much of a secret coming out of Clemson, like a big-time prospect uh, that could have a bright future. I thought people were really low on him, though, just because maybe he didn't. He, he was kind of known for a bull rush, not much else, and wasn't super productive. People were kind of low on him, and we didn't hear any of his, you know, anything from him his rookie year. So people kind of got really cold on him. But he was behind Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard. He still is, but. And he was a raw prospect, kind of had to develop some more, 
you know, pass rush moves for him. But I think he has a bright, bright future. Cam Sample went down recently. Uh, I think Murphy will be used and be more of an impact than people realize. I think he has a bright future. For the Steelers, I go to receiver Calvin Austin. I thought about putting Cordero Patterson in here because he could play running back, could play receiver. Probably going to be used more than people thought, but how much of a secret is he at this point? Uh, I think Austin will take it a step up this year, being used more and being more productive, the shifty receiver. Uh, you know, the Steelers need receivers. They're trying to get Ayuk for a reason. You know, maybe that doesn't happen. But uh, another receiver here, the Browns going to go with a rookie from Louisville, Jamari Thrash. It looks like the Browns are looking to add another receiver. And, you know, Thrash is a really good separator, really good route runner. Um, you know, so I, I think he'll be using the rotation a little bit more. You know, Cedric Tillman's kind of that bigger name, and I do like Tillman as a contested catcher, bigger name of that rotation, but this is an easier guy to use. If you want to throw a guy in and you just need some, you know, somebody quick to get that gets easy separation, here's your guy. Uh, does need to catch the ball a little more consistently based off his Louisville tape, but uh, gets open. For the Ravens, I'll go Eddie Jackson. We've got a veteran here, and he started off really good in Chicago and then very underwhelming after that, and people are like, yeah. Very underwhelming. Don't have a lot of expectations. Goes to the Ravens. They have Marcus Williams in that spot that Eddie Jackson plays, but they also have Kyle Hamilton. They got a number of guys in the in the, in the secondary. So people are not expecting a whole lot. But if you look at that Ravens defense last year, they had Marcus Williams, they had Kyle Kyle Hamilton, and they and Geno Stone was off the bench and was super productive. Got himself a pretty good contract with the Bengals. Eddie Jackson could be that guy. He's a playmaker. I think he could revive his career here uh, on the road in the rotation with the Baltimore Ravens. So I bet you he gets his hands on the ball a bit. I, I bet you if he gets the opportunity. Uh, speaking of the Bears, go on to the Chicago Bears. Dominique Robinson, uh, who is a young defensive end, and he actually was formerly a receiver, actually played on offense. So he was kind of known as a raw prospect coming out a couple years ago. And, you know, so it was going to take some time for him to get going. And the Bears' defensive end opposite side of Montez Sweat, it's kind of up for grabs right now. You know, you have Demarcus Walker. They drafted, you know, Austin Booker. You know, they got guys that possibly could fill that role. It could be a big-time rotation. But I'd watch out for Robinson finally kind of stepping up. I'm not a big name get guy right now, so um, could be something. Could end up starting. Could end up being a key rotation guy for the Vikings. I'll go to receiver Jalen Naylor. Uh, hasn't really got too many opportunities in the last couple of years. His only couple of years being in the league. I thought when he has played, I, th- I thought he looked pretty decent. And then the first preseason game, which was the other day, he actually looked really good. Started for them, you know, with Sam Darnold in there, was getting really good early separation and make them play. So uh, they needed someone else to stand, step up, especially with possibly Jordan Addison being suspended. So this is a guy that does, if that happens, does he even start right away? If he's not starting, he's he's a key rotational receiver. Remember, they lost Osborne. They do have Powell, who's pretty solid. Um, you know, so But a guy to watch here, look like Darnell and him were linking up really early in that preseason game. For the Packers, Carl Brooks, who had a – sneaky really good he definitely not even that sneaky like he had a really good rookie season but I say sneaky because people don't really talk about it a whole lot people don't really talk about Carl Brooks like they should but he's a really good football player he played off the edge at Bowling Green but you know coming to the NFL a little bit of a tweener because is he just too big not quick enough even though pretty quick for his size to play off the edge. So the Packers used him at the end in their 3-4 a little bit more. But it's a guy that can play that D end spot. He can play off the edge. He just find he's, he's a dude. You know, he finds ways to get after the quarterback. So he's going to be productive. He's going to be a very good football player for the Green Bay Packers. Much more of a football player than people realize. Uh, went a little deeper with the Lions. Antoine Green, who in the 2023 draft, that, that's the class he was in. Uh, he was one of my favorite deep sleepers. Was not a big name at all from North Carolina. But when I watched him, like he got open. He he got his hands on the ball. He was really good contested catcher down the field. In uh, the Lions, you know, losing Josh Reynolds, they could use someone to step up. You know, all all eyes on Jamison Williams stepping up. But uh, Green's Green should get in the action. I, I don't know. I liked him a lot. Uh, you know, a year ago, and the Lions are really good with you know developing some of these players. So that's one to watch when it comes to the rotation of the Detroit Lions. Uh, onto the uh, AFC. South teams. This is actually one of my favorite ones in this video. Josh Wiley, the tight end for the Tennessee Titans, because this is kind of the definition of the secret rep and a guy that's not really being talked about that's going to be used a bit more. You know, kind of the definition of this video because there's probably a lot of people going like, who? I mean, not the Titans fans. Titans fans, no, but they probably go, hey, who is that again? 
Uh, rookie last year out of Cincinnati was a pretty solid tight end for them. You know, good looks to part, good size, good build, good hands. Um, and then people also probably go, well, their tight end is Chigo Conquo. You know, kind of a weapon there, but. I'd watch out for Wiley. Okonkwo is more of that, that gadget weapon type tight end, almost like a receiver, um, you know, like a wing back could be even, uh, you know, and then looking at Brian Callahan come from the Bengals, you know, they, they didn't really use those types of tight ends. They use your traditional type of tight end that can play in line, that could block and be sneaky as a pass catcher. This is more of that guy, second year tight end. So I would watch out for Josh Wiley actually being, the Titans' best tight end this year, uh, like true tight end. So watch out for him. For the Colts, I go with Tyquan Lewis, who's a veteran, been around for a little bit with the Colts. I, th I think with Samson Abukum going down, who was a unique type pass rusher for Gus Bradley's defense, is a guy that can stand up and rush compared to the other side and actually can drop in coverage. So uh, I, and right now, Lewis is listed as the starter in that spot. Now, I do think... They'll adjust so that lot two can start opposite of Quiddy Pay, um, but this is a a player they definitely do want to use in, in those ways. So he could be, you know, this is kind of the the year for his career to kind of kind of, kind of get going, maybe break out a little bit. So watch out for him on, on the Colts defensive front. For the Jags, ago Parker Washington was a rookie last year, uh, had really good flashes for for Penn State, but disappeared at times. And then when Christian Kirk went down, he made a little bit of noise for the Jags. But couldn't make a lot of noise this year as a rotational receiver, a gadget receiver, and a special team or a returner. Um, so definitely a big one for this video, a big-time secret weapon for the Jacksonville Jaguars. For the Texans, I'll go with Cade Stover, and it might be tough because they have a number of good tight ends. You know, Schultz, Brevin Jordan. Jordan a little bit different of a tight end. Um, you know, I've used Stover, you know, behind Schultz, like that style tight end, but this is a really safe pick. Like he's like a really good bet to be a solid player. Maybe he's doesn't, you know, doesn't have freakish upside, but the guy can block, he's physical, he can catch in traffic. He's tough to bring down after the catch. So, uh, he can make a little bit of noise, even if people aren't expecting it right now. Uh, but the rookie from Ohio State is one to watch. For the Panthers, I'll go to their new pass rusher, DJ Wanham. He was a backup for Minnesota, but man, he was pretty productive. Uh, as a backup for them, and the Panthers need someone to step up. He could be that guy, and he was a raw prospect, you know, bit purely off traits out of South Carolina a few years ago. So his time to kind of really break out is supposed to be, you know, coming up still. So that's a good sign for the Panthers. Pass rusher to watch. For the Falcons, I'll go to rookie Brandon Dorless. I was a huge Brandon Dorless guy, higher on him than anyone. I was surprised where he went, but he was a little bit of a tweener, so I guess that's why. But yeah, he can rush off the edge if you need him to, but I do like him inside. The Falcons need guys to step up across the defensive line. I'd watch out for him. He's really good at reading the quarterback and getting his hands in the ball, like the pass deflections, but I'd watch out for him. He is more of an upside guy, so it's okay if he's not productive right away, but I think he's going to make some noise right away as a rotational piece for Atlanta, so watch out for that rookie. Uh, undrafted rookie here, Dalen Holker from Colorado State. was a really good tight end for Colorado State, but he was a little stiff. Even though he had great hands, was productive, productive, a little stiff. So you know, Saints end up stealing him, and and they they're suffering injury, you know, big time injury of their starting tight end, and Juwan Johnson. So they need someone to step up. All eyes are kind of on Moreau, but I watch out for Holker. I mean, it's another safe bet to put out. Like he he he'll catch the ball and he'll be physical, so he can actually get some playing time uh, for the Saints this year. Could be a target for Derek Carr. Uh, another rookie, we're going to go with Tampa receiver Jalen McMillan, who another guy I was a huge fan of, a lot of you out there probably were as well, from Washington. Uh, but I think he was slept on a little bit because if he was a little injured this past year, so that made him the third best receiver on Washington. But you look when he was healthy, when still all three of those big-time receivers were there two years ago, he was actually debatably their best receiver even over Roma Dunze. Not that I think he's better than him. but uh, And then the Bucks draft him, it's like, all right, it's a good player, but... Man, they have a number of receivers already there, and I like him in the. Everyone liked him in the slot, even though he could play outside. That's kind of Chris Godwin, but man, he is turning the heads big time at training camp. Uh, they're gonna find a way to make sure he gets on the field, so he's gonna be much more of an impact uh, than we think. Uh, you know, just because there's good guys ahead of him doesn't mean he can't make an impact. Chargers, I'll go at Cam Hart, rookie from Notre Dame. The cornerback group besides Asante Samuel, it's pretty wide open, uh, you know, for for playing time, even for maybe a starter. Cam Hart, I think could be a plug and play guy. Was really physical in man coverage at Notre Dame, so you, you know uh, 
Harbaugh, Michigan, that staff, they're going to ask a lot. You know, they want physical man coverage guys in there. Uh, you know, so I think he can make an impact as a rookie right away. For the Broncos, go to DB. Uh, Riley Moss from Iowa uh, last year. Not this past draft, but a guy that I think he can make an impact at nickel. I think he can make an impact at corner. I think he can make an impact at safety, really. So I think they're going to find ways to get him on the field. He can be a playmaker, a uh, sneaky playmaker for them, whether he's rotation or not. Uh, for the Raiders, go to second-year receiver Trey Tucker. Speed, he's, he's maybe the fastest guy on this team, and he might be that third receiver for them. Had a nice diving catch in the first preseason game. So he's going to be a weapon, going to play in the slot, put him outside, just send him deep. You know, could be that return guy as well, but Tucker going to make a little bit more noise than people realize. For the Chiefs, I'll go rookie tight end Jared Wiley, who I was a fan of as my number three tight end behind Bowers and Sinnott. Uh, another one of those, you know, safe bets to be, you know, plug and play, be solid. The guy gets open, he makes catches, you know, he's a physical body in there. Uh, but I think people realize, you know, maybe his time's not, or people think his time's not yet because, you know, they have a number of tight ends they use, uh, led by Travis Kelsey, but man, he's too talented just to kind of just, and too pro ready just to kind of sit in the bench and do nothing right away. So I think they'll find ways to use him. He'll get his hands on the ball. Uh, this year and then for the Cardinals I've got another rookie a lot of rookies on this video it's usually what it is you know the secret guys that step up earlier than than, than they, you expect Dejan Taylor Demerson from Texas Tech um, you know played a lot of split safety and played in the nickel spot uh, for the for Texas Tech last year uh, you know and he's listed as a second string safety right now but I think we'll see him in the nickel a bit. And they do have a number of guys that can possibly play there. But I think the Cardinals secondary is one of those ultimate secondaries where you're rotational. Like you're seeing different packages, different looks, different players in there. You know, you know, we're going to see there's certain guys we'll see, you know, Buda Baker leading the way on. We'll see like every snap, but there's some, you know, and a couple others, but we'll see a good rotation going. So I think, and he's a, he's a playmaker. Uh, Taylor Demerson. I, I think he'll get his hands on the ball. He'll make a little bit more of an impact than expected. Niners don't really have an obvious one. They have like kind of the same players that play every year, but D winners, you know, young linebacker played really well in the preseason game. Uh, I, you know, and I know they have a number of linebackers already, but again, Greenlaw's injured. I know they bring in Campbell. He's declining a little bit, you know, Another one that, you know, could he go down? I think he'll play fine for the 49ers, could revive his career a little bit there. But I think they, I think they can use winners a little bit here, and it's a flashy guy. So I um, also thought about some corners here. I like Daryl Luter from last year's draft from South Alabama, but he's a little bit down the depth chart, so I thought about him as well. That'd be a little bit deeper of one. Seahawks, I'll go second-year pass rusher Derek Hall. Uh, they do have a number of pass rushers, but they don't have that like sure thing stand out. I do like Nwosu as the stand the main guy there, but um, they they could really use a rotation. And I, Derek Call is so explosive, so explosive. He was so good at Auburn a year ago. Um, well, I should say two years ago now. I think he can figure it out this year and kind of be a, a key piece of that of the rotation. And he was pretty good in the first preseason game as well. Uh, and the Rams, I like this one, Davis Allen. Uh, I know they brought in Parkinson. I do like him a lot around the red zone. And Higby will recover at some point. But Davis Allen was really, you know, sneaky good at Clemson. You know, just got open in the middle of the field and made plays. Um, you know, maybe we sell a couple of those plays here and there with the Rams. But I think he can kind of take over as that tight end of the Rams. And that few, definitely the future tight end of the Rams. So definitely a weapon there at tight end that they, they definitely need with Higby being injured at the end of last year. So uh, Davis Allen, I like that one a lot. I like the tight ends in this video. I like the tight ends. Uh, that could be real sneaky. Uh, but that'll do it for this one. I did the same video, the same idea for breakout players for every single NFL team. We're going to do more videos like this. I always love doing these. So you can check that one out. It's on the channel. We have a lot of content. I cannot wait for our in-season content. It's the best. Uh, big plans for this year. So if you join us, important links down in the comments, in the description. Join us on Twitter. Very important. It's going to do it. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.